More than 80% of the land in the South Australian Murray-Darling Basin region is used for producing food and fibre from lamb, beef, pork, poultry, grains and fruit and vegetables through to wool, milk, wine and fish. Hi, I'm Sharon Starrick. Welcome to my family farm. Our family has been farming in this area for five generations. 2014 is the international year of family farming. Our Natural Resource Management Board wanted to celebrate the contribution that our farming families make to the South Australian Murray-Darling Basin and share with you some of our most successful farming families. These farmers aren't just food producers, they're business women and men, they're teachers in their communities, they're inventors and innovators and they manage their natural resources. I hope you enjoy hearing about our farming families and join with me in acknowledging the huge contribution that they make to our region and our country. The family that you're about to meet is moving into their fourth generation of dairy farming at Mount Compass. They believe in raising healthy cows and looking after their land. This is their story. We're Michael and Jodie Connor. We operate Nankita Dairies, um, which includes a dairy farm at Nankita and also one at Mount Jagged. Nankita's 65 kilometres south of Adelaide. It's about central to the Fleurieu Peninsula. I think Mount Compass Town is central to the Fleurieu Peninsula. Two brothers married two sisters in the valley a long time ago and uh, one brother and sister shifted to Meadows and one brother and sister shifted here. They uh, pulled their house down in the Mallee, put numbers on all the bits of wood, shifted it to here and put it back together again. <laughs> so it was a bit crooked, the, do <laughs> the doors and that were a bit crooked, but uh, that's how they did it. So the, the, where we're actually now in our house, we've, we've purchased this farm additional to our original farm. So when I first remember we were on the dairy next door that was the original farm and uh, then we've purchased this farm it's now a third generation dairy and we're in this location we've purchased about four parcels of land so Nankita dairies is made up of four parcels of land so some we lease and some we own so it makes up 600 hectares the breed of cows, predominantly Frisians, some, some crossbreds, but mostly Frisians. And um, it makes it a bit complex running four different farms. So we use them for dry cows and for heifer rearing, and we strategically shift milking cows between farms to match the growth. So we need all, all members of the team switched on to their roles so that we can pull this off efficiently. Uh, there's quite a few people in the team, a big, good group of young'uns work here and whatever. The key management roles now as Chelsea, the oldest, is uh, Heard and she has a young fella that helps her and they do all of the mating, breeding, all of the problem solving, anything to do with herd management and herd health. Uh, Jake, the next sundown, he's been here for coming up four years and he's really focused and keen on growing pasture and um, allocating the right amount of pasture to cows, feeding cows in the most cost effective manner so him and Chelsea work closely together as far as feeding the herd. I've always had a love for animals. Um, I obviously grew up on this farm. I used to I uh, started from a very young age, I was always in the dairy as a toddler, chasing the cows around and feeding calves and things. Um, as I got older, I wasn't quite exactly sure what I wanted to do when I left school. Um, I applied for uni and got into a Bachelor of Animal Science at um, the University of Adelaide at Roseworthy. So I went and did that for three years. Um, at the end of that, uh, I came home and helped out around the place while I was looking at different job options. I did a lot of work experience and things with other people. Um, but while I was working here and also trying other things, it sort of made me realise that I was sort of already where I wanted to be. Um, 
and that was two and a half years ago and since then I've just uh, I've taken on more and more responsibility more and more management roles together with my eldest brother Jake we're sort of slowly taking control from my dad my dad sort of slowly stepping back into the background and we're taking on sort of a more um, heftier part of the farm um, so I'm hoping that we can continue on improving the business and letting my dad sort of fall back and have a more relaxed time. Um, this is my fourth year on the on the farm after completing year 12 in 2010 and uh, currently my position on the farm is um, I mainly base most of my time into the pasture on all, all the properties and the feeding of the herd. Both dairies finish milking at about the same time and we all just happen to be at breakfast at about the same time. Um, we use this time to plan our days, to debrief about what happened yesterday, uh, what the plan is for today. Um, just And then everyone sort of departs and sort of knowing what that needs to get done for that day. Um, so that, that's something that's very critical for us to work efficiently, know where, where everybody is and what everyone's going to be doing for that day. Tegan's a bit different. She loves helping on the farm. She'll always go and fill in for milking or help with calves or anything, but she wanted to pursue a career in midwifery, which we fully support. It's only recently that I've decided to pursue a different career um, off the farm, unlike all my brothers and sisters I'm doing midwifery at uni at the moment. Um, but I really did enjoy all the growing up that I did on the farm and being a part of the farm, and I still do now. I love that the fact that I still live here and can do the uni and do midwifery in the city and then come back and still be on the farm. I really enjoy that. Um, but I think it's good to also be able to pursue other things and still have coming back on the farm as an option in the future because I really enjoy it. Brad's in year 10 at school and he, he loves tractor driving and helping out and he will probably come and work on the farm. Um, he's doing a school-based traineeship as well. I'm Brad, I'm 15 and I'm the youngest in the family. And I go to, I'm in year 10 at Abra Agricultural High School in Adelaide. And I enrolled myself there because I wanted to study more in agriculture and I couldn't get that at the other, at my old school investigator where the rest of the family went. And I'm also studying Certificate 3 in Ag alongside of school. Yeah, I've always liked Ag, I've always wanted to do farming things. I've always liked machinery more than animals though. Yeah, I've always, always wanted to be an ag. Couldn't think of doing anything else. Mum, mum's had a key role. So, mum was a school teacher when she met dad. And she was teaching at Compass, I think, but she was a school teacher. And so she was a city girl. Dad was a country bloke. And it always did feel a bit like that in the, in the households. For, well, for many years, it was my husband and I running the business. I always fed the calves and had no other, I didn't milk or do anything else involving the farm. That I did the book work and, uh, and always raised the calves. And now my son and his family run the dairy, so I'm just still involved in the calves and have been for th over 35 years. So I like doing it and I think it helps them out, but I, it helps me out too because it's good for me to do it. I love animals, I love the baby animals. So, you know, it's all just a win-win. We're, we're going through a bit of a change and a focus on profitability and in the past we've had up to a thousand cows on this home dairy farm. We're, we're now down to 350 cows on this home dairy farm. And um, through all of that period and seeing what's changed and what's happened and Jay coming home with direction, we're thinking um, the less cows is a more sustainable way to operate as far as animal health and also on the farm so we don't do as much damage in winter and in summer and when there's no grass as what we were doing then. So th this farm's got a fair bit of swamp country and it's got a, a fair few rare species of plants and birds 
The creek system uh, um, is a fairly diverse and fairly clean protected creek. So we've undergone um, some funded fencing from the um, Gore to Wellington Lap. Uh, so this is a good example of a typical um, swamp around Mount Compass. Um, and so now that we've got it fenced off, um, there won't be any, any stock ever ever in there. So that, that'll just thicken up over time. And also each year, um, a certain amount of weed control gets done in the swamp just to maintain it. For me, for me the, the farming that we've been doing has to change. So the last at least eight years has been pretty tough for dairy farming. So we've had to change our focus a bit in our business and, and control our costs better and get efficient with our time and just really focus the business down. In the, in the past years we've incurred a fair bit of debt. So now we're working together with the family to try and run the farm as efficiently as we can and pull some of that debt down so that we're long term sustainable. It's, it's a common thread that um, family farms can be the most profitable farms. So it, it gives it an opportunity for everybody to be involved in the business to see their own future long term in the business. You get, can have great employees and we've got great employees but it's just hard to give them the same goals as what the family just has naturally and I think that brings a whole focus to management in, in a family farm. So to me I, I think other farms can work but I think if you can make a family farm, if you can get on, if you can speak honestly, if you can talk about your strengths and weaknesses between yourselves which we do, we're, we're open, highly communicative family. I think they can be the strength family farms in agriculture. Thank you to the Connor family for sharing their story. Watch out for other stories about family farms on our website and check out the International Year of Family Farming and how the world recognises the contribution that farming families make all around the world.